Now, the latest Deloitte's China outbound merger and acquisition report points to some recovery after weak economic figures. Outbound investments increased over the first half of 2013 as local investors became increasingly confident about overseas prospects. Join me in studio for a look at whether this optimism is set to continue. Is Sean McPhee, partner at Corporate Finance at Deloitte and to Sean, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Let's first get the drive uh, the drivers of growth. What's behind this increase in outbound merger and acquisition uh, activity by Chinese investors? Thanks very much. The survey really looked at all the deals or the outbound deals from Chinese investors into Africa. Um, and what we saw was a significant increase from the, the last half of 2012. So 98 deals have been done with a value of about 35 billion. That is up from 89 deals in the preceding year. And uh, we're seeing this really driven by the need for China to secure resources in right. Africa to fund their own growth. The other important thing is to look at the state-owned entities. They really are going global. And as they go global, obviously, they're looking to deploy that capital. And with that, they're obviously looking for a return. Mm -hmm. And I think Africa shows a lot of the attributes where they can get what they're looking for. And it is a sound investment platform for them. And Sean, and which countries uh, in Africa are attracting the lion's share of this uh, M&A activity? As I say, the big driver is the natural resources. Mm. So wherever those sit, we're seeing Nigeria, we're seeing some in funds in the east of Africa. Um, because South Africa is the largest economy in Africa at the moment, there's also a lot of investment. We saw, I think, in 2007, the largest inward investment of um, RCBC buying into Standard Bank. Mm -hmm. Very recently, we saw a lot of interest in real estate. We saw the announcement of uh, Shanghai Zendai, oh, yes. um, who bought the property portfolio of AECI. So we're really looking at those areas where consumer business um, resources and real estate are situated mm -hmm. and where there's an appetite in Africa. The past in Africa hasn't really been dotted with a lot of the big, big ticket items that uh, surpass the 100 million US dollar benchmark, but we're seeing that somewhat change. What's behind the increased appetite for big deals? I think what's very interesting in the survey is that we saw out of 15 mega deals being over $1 billion, nine were actually completed. Right. And as I said, the largest deal we saw in Africa before was the RCBC acquisition of Standard Bank. And I think as the state-owned enterprises and the Chinese companies start investing, they've got a lot more experience in doing deals in Africa. Mm -hmm. And they are now appointing advisors. It's seen as, as um, I think in the past, they used to do a lot of it on their own, but we're seeing success in the mega deals. And that was an interesting part in the survey that we're really getting large deals done. Right. And with that come experience and more appetite to do the larger deals. Sean, the Chinese have always come under scrutiny when it comes to the other indicators that should be considered before they go into a, a specific deal or you know, acquire a specific asset. Are we finding that other than return on investment that uh, Chinese investors are maybe looking at political stability, democracy or any of those uh, airy fairy principles that don't seem to fit into their analysis? You know, I think the whole thing has always been underpinned by this desire to secure natural resources to fuel their own, their own growth in China. But obviously, as they diversify, they're focusing on consumer business. We mm -hmm. spoke around the real estate transactions. But, you know, the, the big impediment is a lot of people see Chinese investors as coming and taking resources out yeah. and not actually prying back into the economy. So the big question then is, are they colonizing Africa, taking the resources and leaving nothing behind? Mm -hmm. And I think that is one thing. As they do more and more deals, yeah. they need to change the way they do these transactions in Africa. They need to create sustainable employment. They need to make sure that when they leave, there is still that sustainability. Mm -hmm. So brand China in Africa at this moment hasn't really turned the corner in terms of being seen in a favorable light, but it sounds as if there's certainly scope to do that. Yes, as I said, there certainly is, and I think they are realizing that you have to also abide by local legislation. You can't just bring your own people in. You've got to transfer knowledge. You've also got to leave something sustainable behind, and that is slowly changing. Mm. But as we said, as more and more transactions happen and we see these mega deals, these deals wouldn't be closed if they hadn't made those agreements up front. Right. Of course, uh, understanding that it's natural resources that really are attracting the Chinese investors. But we're also seeing some negative trends, in particular the declining attraction of manufacturing assets. Shed some light on what's happening there. 
that was an interesting finding where we saw the number of manufacturing deals decline from 18 in, in the last um, half of 2012 down to about 12 or 13 transactions in the first half of this year. And you know the reason is I think Africa is such a big consumer of Chinese goods and services and nowhere else can really compete mm -hmm. with the Chinese cost of manufacturing those goods. Um, so the acquisitions that did happen were really there to to almost gain market share, to, right. to really enter new markets. But we have seen some tapering off really because of the cost of manufacturing. So in, in Africa, you have to be cost competitive. Yeah. If you can make it cheaper at home, why would you go and buy manufacturing businesses in Elsewhere. Africa mm. rather just send the product across. Right, and also interesting uh, findings for me was that there seems to be growing attraction for the US and Western European markets. And this is surprising because one would think there's still some uncertainty in US markets. Uh, it's not quite clear whether Western Europe is really out of the woods right now. Why are the Chinese flooding in? We have seen an uptick in the investments into the US. I think the most recent one was Smithfield. That was a large acquisition of about uh, I think it was seven billion dollars um, and that was really around I would say gaining technological best practice mm. you know the Chinese are big consumers of pork that's a big pork producer so that deal really made sense and was really a mega deal kind of in the consumer space what we saw in the US I think it was about 14 deals to the value of, of 12 billion that one obviously being a very large one mm. and that was up from the prior period which was only six deals um, so we've seen almost a doubling, but within the survey, we also asked respondents, what did they see one of the macroeconomic um, negatives of, of, at the moment in the investment um, mm -hmm. arena? And it was really this growth in the US. Is yeah. that, you know, have they turned the corner? Are we going to see growth? What does that look like? Um, the US are big consumers of Chinese products as well. Right. So I think those trade relations will always be there. And I think that the Chinese are also capitalizing on some of the negativity because they're getting these assets at more reasonable prices right. or lower prices at so lower valuations. So it sounds as if their global economic forces are in their favor right now. Sean, thank you so much for making the time to join us on Beyond Market.